I'm Taylor Price. I have been a coordinator now for one year. I am a coordinator in Grayson and Fannin County in Texas. I ended up finding out about Toys for Tots because I went from a position in life where I was very fortunate to a very less fortunate position as a child and started receiving Toys for Tots toys for Christmas. And I wanted to find a way to give back. And then this whole thing kind of landed in my lap and it was like a dream come true. What better way to give back than to participate in a nonprofit organization that actually helped me when I was a child. Both of my parents ended up being federally incarcerated. So my dad went before my mom. I have a brother who's 17 months younger than me. He would write like little notes um, on the Christmas tree and he would say like, all I want is my dad to come home for Christmas. My mom, when she was federally incarcerated, they gave her, the judge gave her a year to get her affairs in order. So we knew the last Christmas we had with her was going to be the last Christmas we had with her for, for the next five years. So, so the first time I was ever homeless, I was in the sixth grade. And all I could think about was where am I gonna go and what am I gonna do with my little brother and how am, am I gonna get to school? My aunt took us in. My aunt was not fortunate at all. Um, she came from a, a completely different walk of life. Our house was very ran down. The day my brother ran away, my aunt said we couldn't live there anymore. So my grandfather came and he packed all of our stuff up and we left everything we had ever known. My grandfather was um, in recovery. He was an alcoholic, he was in recovery. Um, he is no longer in recovery and has relapsed. So just dealing with that type of parenting um, I remember CPS was called a few times. I figured out how to make a collect call in computer class when I was in the seventh grade. Whenever he left to go to work, I had saved up pennies in the parking lot for months. I had counted pennies and change, and I had made a collect call to my aunt that we had previously lived with. And when she answered, I told her, you know, I don't need a place to stay, but I have $52 in gas money. Can you please just come and pick us up? We'll be at the end of the road. So my brother went to live with some distant family members and I was able to stay with my aunt. I lived with my aunt for just a very short period of time. Um, and then my aunt kicked me out of the house as well. My grandmother lived across the street from my aunt at this time. She was still married to the same man that didn't want her to have children. She had a one bedroom house. She didn't have any room for me. She worked nights at the police department, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. If he was home when I would get out of school or out of softball practice, I would walk home all the way across town and I would sleep on the bench on the porch because I wasn't allowed to go inside or my grandmother would send one of the police officers to pick me up and I would go to the police station and sleep underneath her desk. And I lived that way until my mom came home. Then when she came to my grandma's house, we were all living in a little one bedroom house. It was very rough on her. She didn't know how to be a mom anymore. It took all three of us working. Um, we spent years, years, countless years like without food not able i'm sorry we just did everything we could to make it and we just kept on and kept on and kept on and finally broke even but as a result of that i have an autoimmune disorder uh lupus and lupus has damaged my kidneys and i have actually been in renal failure since 2018 um, which is another reason why I stopped fostering because just it was just draining me, taking too much out of me. I ended up taking in so many kids because I was the kid that nobody wanted. I was shoveled around from house to house and I was always made to feel like I was a burden wherever I was at. And I never felt loved. I never felt like someone was taking care of me because it was the right thing to do. All of that has taken years to recover from and tons of therapy, but working with Toys for Tots, it makes me so happy just to know when I'm giving a child Christmas, I may not know, you know why they're in the particular situation that they're in. Uh, some of these kids are still fortunate enough to be with their parents. 
Some of them aren't. Some of them are being raised by other family members or are in foster care. And, and I know that that one little glimmer of hope can make a, a really big difference. I left training and all I could think was how many times did I think to myself, I'm never gonna make it. I'm never gonna make it anywhere. My story is never gonna matter to anybody else. And then one day it just clicked with me. I will not let these people count me out because this is where I came from. So if I could talk to myself back then, I would tell myself, don't ever let them count you out just because you're that kid, you know, just because you're the kid that gets made fun of in school for the way you smell or for the clothes that you have. Don't, don't you ever let them tell you that they're better than you because some of the best people in the world come from backgrounds like that. They come from very humble, humble beginnings and they know how much sweeter the top is when you get there because you've worked so much harder for it than everyone else.